Welcome to Game Breakers. My name is Thomas. Uh, this is... Go ahead. Allison. David. Uh, playing Stan Smith and Click Like the Gnome, uh, respectively. And we are continuing a bard's tale. Uh, without the bard, incidentally. <laughs> uh, Diamond is volunteering at a girls' camp uh, and, and having a great, great time educating young girls about being awesome. Um, North Star Quest Girls Camp, if anybody, you know, needs a tax write-off this year and has something to donate to, uh, check them out. It's a great cause. Meanwhile, when last we left our intrepid heroes, let's see, we are backtracking just a touch. We, uh, Diamond's character, Sharona Harja, is practicing up for maybe the most important exam of her life. And meanwhile, the other characters have some downtime. Quickly, let's recap what you guys were up to. Um, Stan, you had been shopping in the market for a while, uh, discovered some shenanigans, and after that, you had been drinking to make friends, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd been drinking to make friends and had... Um... Uh, and, and learned, learned some about the history of my armor, as I remember. Yes. Yes. Uh, one of the friends was from the family who's, uh, who had commissioned your armor. And you learned why it was commissioned and how it came to be that they could no longer pay for it. And, and, and your adventure sense tingled a little bit. Like, hmm. Mm -hmm. It was mentioned that that... That family's opposition to getting to voting essentially for uh, the dwarven mobilization is the need for resources to defend their underground territory. Click Clack, meanwhile, had basically taken up residence at the workshop in the Druid Grove. Making and uh, a few mornings before the big performance, as you're opening up the workshop, you know, setting setting tools from where you put them at the night, you know, so picking the tools you're going to need for the day, laying them out, doing the doing the craftsman thing. You, you prep for an hour and then you start. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a lot more activity than usual in the Grove and a lot of people you don't recognize, um, some that are wounded many that are obviously exhausted and tired, uh, I, some being shepherded by, by other people from the Grove. Uh, as, you're, as this is starting to sink in, uh, one of the younger rangers runs in. And it's completely out of breath. So, sort of leans down to catch his breath and also kind of gets, to, gets more to eye level with you. And, and he's like, click, click. Your presence has been requested. Where? There, there is an impromptu war room being set up. The grove has been invaded. I, I, I understood. Okay. Uh, where? where you can follow where? me. What? You can follow me. Okay. Yeah. He he looks to Lovelace. Uh, will your we're around, will be accompanying us? Yes. All right. Go quickly. We'll have to take the roundabout way. Unless it can climb a ladder? Yeah. Oh. He looks a little confused. He's like, all right then. And it takes you up around. There, there's a, a much tougher, it, it's kind of a tricky climb. Um, it's it's not the, the traffic route. It's more like the emergency access route. Uh, and he takes you up 70, 80 feet in, uh, up the trunk of this tree. So, and and she can climb no problem, eh? <laughs> I, I looked it up. Clowns can, okay. can climb ladders. There's video. <laughs> well, if YouTube says it, then it then it exists in our fantasy world. <laughs> On YouTube, that guy Meta, um, the <laughs> uh, 
you start to see less traffic as, as you get to this level, but more distinguished traffic. Uh, everyone here is armed and armored. Uh, every, everyone is ready. The bulk uh, of the traffic sort of, sort of exists in a bubble around several tables that are set up with a few people debating, um, you know, mostly in Druidic, but, uh, but you know, a lot of conversations being held. It's a little bit busy um, it, towards the center. And you see in the middle, uh, with several maps laid out and, and magical illusions, uh, essentially, or, you know, Druid crafted pieces uh, set out on a map. And he notices as you as you come in, and Rathal so motions you forward. It's good that you can make it on such short notice. I appreciate it. What what is going on? Hyperion to the northwest or northeast has been invaded. The Ranger Scouts identified incoming wave of undead early in the uh, early in the morning before before dawn they had likely marched all night for martyrs bolwa they seem much more directed than the undead in the area and the evacuation was called only a few remained to man the defenses we need information, and I understand that you have an airship. Yes. Excellent. You you need a scouting party. I'm thinking more force reconnaissance. I I I don't have a military background. Can you specify? See, the that would be to observe. And then seek and destroy. All right. Who who else do you want to send? Well, <laughs> there's you, of course. I had the inclination that you may bring your paladin friend. I would imagine he would be willing to assist, yes. He's equipped for the task. There is also something at stake for his own interests. We spoke briefly some days ago about a method of travel available to Druids. Mm -hmm. It involves having been physically present in multiple trees and being able to transport from one to the other. This bypasses the trouble with, uh, with other magical travel. Mm -hmm. It does require that physical presence and there are precious few who have traveled to the Bodmo Moor, at least that I'm aware of and certainly in the area and the nearest of which is the Dru is the druid who remained? Understood. As far as we know, they they are still alive. Yes, Ishka. But, but our intel is not fantastic. Ishka is formidable. He holds a deeper connection to the land even than I. And he has traveled far and wide. Mm -hmm. How soon do we leave? As soon as you can. What's my quickest way of getting to Stan? Or, or pick, picking him up? Are you, oh, are you asking Androth? Yeah, out of character. Sorry. Oh. Well, you have the earring. Uh, you find yeah, out where he is and how to do it. Like, would I be going to get meet him and then we head to the airship? Uh, or 
I just what, what's the quickest pickup and take off? Well, Stan's on the other side of the Confederacy currently. He's in the Dwarven District. Mm -hmm. uh, your fastest route, honestly, is probably for both of you independently to take an eagle to the airship. Question. Is there, yes. like, a way to remotely request an eagle? Is there eagle Uber? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I could send it, you know, I could send a courier. I could send a courier to the eagle place to come with money to come pick me up. Yeah, um, you can definitely send an acolyte ahead. They they can't pick people up off the streets. There there's there are public there's, safety ordinances. There's there's a there's a wingspan issue. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just jump up and right. grab it. It'll be great. It's right. like landing like, clearance is a problem. It's like Ubering a helicopter. You gotta be in a place that can accommodate a helicopter. Right, and eagles have this awful blind spot right behind the talons. It's <laughs> they tried it once. There's still a lot of lawsuits. <laughs> I mean, a skilled eagle could probably do it, but the eagle, the the screaming eagle, Airy Corporation doesn't want to doesn't want to deal with the paperwork. It's really hard to write that out with beak. So, <laughs> um. So <laughs> for 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 the sake of time, uh, I earring Stan and tell him in the driest terms possible all of the bullet points of everything I just learned, and ask if he can meet me at the airship. Yes. Yes. Uh, who? What was the name? Was it the name? I feel like there was a name that was dropped in there. Um, was it the druid who was still who had remained? Ishga is the druid that remained. Ishga. Ishga. All right. Well, sounds sounds like there is need for um, for a paladin. So I'm there. Let me grab my hammer and get my arm off this winch, and let's go. Right. Ah, it's, it's near sunrise. How drunk and or hungover are you, Stan? Oh. It's how, when, when is it? It's, it? it's just after sunrise. Just after sunrise? Oh, he'd probably be hungover, actually. Okay. A little bad. Eh. Right, you're in a carousing downtime week, so that's fair. That's drink, get some, get some mage, and bribe some mage to do some purify water. Drink that. Go. Drink a minor uh, heal. You're fine. Right. So, so you you find a fine young boy standing idle on the streets in the dwarven district. <laughs> you're there. This is silver. Go give me an eagle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he is eager. He, he's like, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Stan. Guys, I'm helping Stan. <laughs> uh, and he, he runs uh, runs off at, at quadruple speed to the uh, nearest transport station. Excellent. Um... I head back to the workshop I'd been using, mm -hmm. grab everything offensive that I've built, because I don't carry all of that on me when I'm just headed to to tinker. <laughs> but bas basically, I prepare for war and <laughs> mount up and ha and head to the the Eagle Cab Company. I, I imagine you have, like, a morning checklist uh, of, like, you know, just, like, stuff you put on in the morning and where it all goes. And on the back is, like, the war morning checklist of, like, and this is where you go when it's time to kill things. Yeah. Thicker <laughs> lines. So we're meeting at the airship, right? Yes. Which is where all currently? Right. 
We parked it outside the city, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, outside the voice, right? I don't remember. It, it was it was north of the wall near the voice district. Yeah. Are we going to have to bribe these eagles to keep the location of it quiet? I mean, are we? Are you, I guess we'll just put it in a different place next time. But I think yeah. we should definitely bribe these eagles. What do eagles like? Money? Yeah. Patriotism. <laughs> different sort of eagle. <laughs> these aren't blue and fuzzy. They, these uh, eagles have their hair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you've, uh, they're, they're often, you know, they're, they're happy to, to take tips. It is going to be, because it's outside the city, it's going to be a specialty ride anyway. They charge a little extra for that. I don't buy any of this. Fine. Uh, it's like excessive, is it accessible on the ground? I thought it like, wasn't it something like it beamed us up or something? I don't remember. To get into you. You went into it through a plane. Uh, so you you misty stepped in between a portal to the shadow plane and a portal to hell, which no longer exists in your airship. <laughs> no, to get into the airship. Yeah, that's how you got in the first time. Uh, <sighs> and then you used fly potions to get out. So it's still airborne. Oh, okay. So we fly up to it. Yeah, I we really do need to fly. I tell it to open a hole and we jump in. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, how much? How much is an appropriate bribe for these eagles? The ride itself is thirty silver. Thirty and, silver. You know, tip what you, tip what you like to to buy their their eagly silence. If it helps, they don't speak common. So. <laughs> really gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> Is that thirty? Is that sixty a piece or sixty uh, together? Sixty together, thirty thirty each, and then whatever you want to bribe them. But uh, I won't even require survival checks to make you remember where the airship is parked because the sky has moved since then. So. No. <laughs> All right. All right. You get to the airship. You power it up. Um, that Wonder Woman has this problem. <laughs> They're invisible. <laughs> it responds to her thoughts. <laughs> oh, does it? Well, then she's yeah. way cooler than our airship, for sure. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> you just got so many geeks. <laughs> I got a 24 on my survival check. Oh, I wasn't going to even require it, but you got it. And I think uh, click clack never gets lost. That's just a thing for you. Mm -hmm. You're incapable of. <laughs> if you ever feel lost, you know you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, from the airship, uh, Hyperion is a well-known landmark in the area, and and the ship has map data for it. It, it has some. some Maps of where it's been, primarily. You haven't really explored them, so. Okay. Um. But you go, you, yeah. You get to the to the to the helm, and it it lights up. Oh, welcome! Yeah. Pulls Hello. up the navigation data for you. So, I'm sorry, so the it. It knows where to go, or the ship oh, I... knows where to go, or what? You said it has uh, map. I could make best speed. All right. I'm fully capable of flying myself. No, no objection here. Keep a lookout for hazards, but yeah. I try Would you speed. like best safe speed? Or best speed. Pardon the question. What's the difference? Safety. Let's go safe speed. All right. For all I know, regular speed is a blender. 
Uh, briefly, when you think that, because you're telepathically linked, uh, a, a little screen comes up of like a, a, a trajectory that, the, you know, kind of levels and plateaus it out, and one that goes up and down like a roller coaster to the area. Safe, safe, safe speed, safe, safety, safe. <laughs> safe. All right, click, clack. Anything else I can get for you? Do you have supplies on board? No. No? Um, no, keep a lookout for anything hazardous and, and carry on. Safely. You feel, again, it's not like... It, it's a very strange sort of acceleration. I mean, it doesn't feel like there's anything pushing pushing from behind you. It's just like you lean a little bit, and, and then you get that, that feeling in your chest that you're moving. But it goes away for a, uh, after, after not too long. Uh, and... Do you see the, the, the ground begin to move? Uh, you gain altitude, you reach cloud level. And then you travel for a few hours at, at top speed. Um, the sun is near noon when off on the horizon, you see storm clouds and a pillar of smoke above them. Above the clouds? Yeah. It's, it's in puffs and billows. It's like multiple fires are being, being uh, like, shooting up and, the, and then being immediately doused out. Right. Um, do, I know it, do I know that that's the location? It matches the area on the map. I will, I will ping it for you. And if you zoom way in on the map, you can you can also see uh, a representative image. And in the educational portion of the, uh, of this uh, of this episode, Hyperion is a real tree, one of the two largest in the world. Uh, it exists in a secret location here in Northern California. Me, 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 me. Exactly. Uh, you don't see the tree yet. The, the storm clouds are massive, and and you can see like as the the airship just starts to gain altitude to to try and get over, above the storm, and the the clouds are towering upward and roiling around. You do see that there is a definite eye of the storm. As you get closer, you can see there are green beans dancing out of that center, just slicing through the daylight. Green leaves? Beans. Beams of energy. Yes. Beams, okay. Yeah. It looks like a Led Zeppelin show. Or Pink Floyd? Pink Floyd. Uh, <laughs> or you, you guys um, alter your approach? Still straight on in? I asked the ship if it can tell what the hell that is. The storm formation ahead of you does not seem natural. Oh. Um, it is a gale force hurricane, by my measurements. And this, it's not where we're headed, it's just on, in the way? Oh, it is. The, uh, the, oh, uh, if you're asking the ship. Uh, the, no, I'm, asking uh, the I'm asking I'm asking DM. Uh, the GM. Uh, it, the, the eye seems centered right where you're going. Ah, uh, hi. It's supposed to be quieter in the center, I hear. Right. Are we able to jump into, like, avoid the 
nastiness and jump into the eye? I believe I can perform this maneuver. We, uh, we would be beyond safe operating procedures. It was bound to happen. Indeed. Um, how smart, GM, how smart is this thing? The ship? The ship. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an elemental, essentially. I mean, it's, it's powered and, and, and conscious by an elemental. So it's right. it's definitely sentient, uh, fairly clever. But I'm but I'm not talking to a supercomputer. No, no, okay. it's really good at like measuring wind and air and things. It's very it's very good at air elemental stuff. But no, it's not. Um, do you have defenses? Camouflage and. Limited durability. Uh, I turned to Stan. Any objections to just trying to jump inside? Jump over to the aggressive part? No. Let's do it. It's worth a shot. Yeah, try, try to avoid the bulk of the uh, storm and aim for the eye. Acknowledged. D do your best to avoid uh, damage in the process. I do preserve a sense of survival. We have that in common. Excellent. Brace yourselves. I'll know when you're ready. <laughs> Uh, and the, the, the entire floor tilts about 15 degrees and, and, and you are flung at about a 45 degree angle. You go ahead and give me an athletics or acrobatics test. Uh, you, you, you were told to brace yourselves. So I watched you do it. So go ahead and take advantage. Do some like Star, star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and shake, left. Shake the camera, shake the camera. <laughs> right, you do the shaky cam behind the ship as it goes in. Sorry, what was that? I have like shaky cam and then super zoom. You said athletics or acrobatics? Yes, either will do. Fantastic. Not fantastic. Plus. Wow! Whoa! Twos, twos. That's wow. Uh, go ahead and roll for Loveless as well. Oh God! Okay. Um. I see Stan with fifteen there. Yep. 21 for Lovelace. Does much better. I'm sure she'll miss me. <laughs> uh, so so you hunker down on the seat and, and, and essentially like you thought you were going to be leaning into the momentum, but you weren't. You, you were leaning across the momentum and when it went, you just tumbled forward and sideways off the ground. Uh, you take five bludgeoning. As, as you are rolled through uh, down to the wall and just kind of kind of plastered there, held there by heat forces. Mm hmm. Was that uh, uh, both? To be both, uh, or just him? Just click clack. Just, just me. Just amazing sixes. No uh, much pinball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lovelace just hunkers right down, and and Stan, you probably do about the same thing. I mean, you have a yeah. lot of density. All right, as the airship 
comes in over the clouds. We'll put the camera behind the, the, the pearl. Are you going in in like cloud color or transparent? Transparent. Okay. So, so we follow a bubble with, with a gnome, uh, a, a crab, and a tin can in it. And <laughs> Uh, floats above the just massive roiling clouds. And as you're going over them, you can see there is lightning flashing in the right, in, exclusively along the ring of the eye. Um, constantly. Like, as you're getting closer, you can feel the thunder shaking through the, uh, the ship. And it's it's having to go even higher up to to avoid sonic damage. <laughs> As you crest the thunderheads and and look down into the clouds, you can see that the top of the tree is only about fifty feet below the eye of this storm. It is immense. It is, it's, it's genus would be in the redwood variety. And it is big compared to redwoods in the way that redwoods are big compared to apple trees. Right. It is a colossal specimen of a colossal breed of tree. As you're cresting, you can see that, uh, it, those those green flashes are coming from the tree itself. The needles have taken on a translucency and are taking in sunlight and redirecting it. Most of the of the beams are are headed downward. You can also see what looks like from this distance, almost like a downy rain like, like just like dandruff fluffing off the tree uh and and needles falling one at a time as you get closer you can see that that there's a seething mass of zombies attempting to climb this thing and when they get to branches needles will will fire off at them and and slough them off uh -uh. <laughs> This is a well-defended uh, tree. Um, you, you can also, it's very tough to, to get your bearings. Actually, as you change direction, I need uh, an athletics or acrobatics from everybody again. I'm going to kill some zombies. Oh, four. Well, it was the roll, but I got 13 for my athletics. We just can't get out of the single digits for these rolls yeah. on the raw. Oh, and Lovelace. Uh... <laughs> Freaking crab. <laughs> Six legs. You just can't beat that for stability. And so... a low center of gravity. So as it crests and, and you're getting this angle, and, and you especially click clack with essentially your face pressed against the edge of the bubble, like, wow, that's amazing. Not and then uh, a beam comes basically slicing upward toward where you are and the entire mechanism spins out of the way. And you are taken from here to and, and it's it's like that ride at the uh, at the carnival where you're stuck against the wall mm -hmm. uh, till exactly the point where you're not, and then you take five more bludgeoning damage. Stan, you also at this point when it spins, you were braced pretty tightly against the momentum you had, and and your boots just skitter out from underneath you. Ah, and Lovelace just judges us. <laughs> Lovelace just follows each of you with the, with one eye stock. <laughs> Diving down 
at, at essentially, I mean, you're at, at about 70 degrees straight down. Uh, it's, uh, and, and no longer moving in a, in a direct straight course. Now, now there's, there are small evasive corrections being taken. Um, it's a rough ride. Plus, at this point, as you're crossing kind of the wind wall, you can also see what is essentially is a seething carpet of dead flesh at the base of the tree. A a extending all the way out to the to the to the wall of the of the storm, which as you're looking at it, I mean this is probably about a thousand to two thousand to fifteen hundred feet across uh from, from end to end as the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. Diving down in, can everybody give me a perception test? You're in you're a little high stress. <laughs> for, for being able to catch. Natural 20, 26. I can't stand, but I can see things. <laughs> so, so uh, how'd you do, Allison? Excellent. Stan gets an 18. So, so Stan is now kind of braced in one corner and, and can see pretty well uh, down off to his right. Uh, click like as you're like spinning briefly out of control and just sort of like whew, everything goes still for just a moment as you're suspended in the air in the middle of the airship like rolling around and you just get, get a perfect snapshot <laughs> which includes at the very top of the tree a t the, the tiniest figure relative to this massive massive creature perched at the topmost branch, arms outstretched, seems to be, you can see very clearly that, that as, as the, ar the robed arms move, you see the flashes of light coming from, from that piece of the tree and, and, and being directed, clearly being directed by this figure. He's puppet mastering the ancient tree. Okay then. <clears throat> and, is, and the and you said the the green beans are 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 burning the zombies. Is that what was happening? Yeah, it it they're scorching along the ground. You can see being buffeted in the winds and and unable to to. Uh, really enter the area. There are flying creatures get basically being torn through the whirlwind, decimated by lightning. On the inside of the, of, of the eye of the storm, they're not even an issue. So the beams are taking care of flying creatures? Flying creatures, ground creatures. Uh, the, the first branches are, are about 150 feet off the ground. The very first smallest branches that, that are first firing the beams, and a lot of those are aimed downwards. So I I wasn't quite clear on from what from my talk with with the druid. Is our job to retrieve the druid here or to eliminate the threat? I was to eliminate the threat. But it sounds like it's just an ocean of zombies, and we're good, but you know. Well, I think, yeah, I, I mean, there is the ocean of zombies, but, I mean, and we could probably take out a lot of them, but finding yeah. the sword, right? They have to have come from somewhere. Right. Like I. So I don't think we have to kill all of them right now, if, if that's your point. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I'm, I'm asking the GM, what, what, I wasn't clear on what specifically... Our, our objective is, like, we see the druid is alive. Are we supposed I'll, to go get him? So, so from what you saw on the map, the, the grove at the Confederacy is mobilizing forces. It is sending people here. So, so you're here to get eyes on the situation, and with force reconnaissance, you basically take out targets of opportunity if there's any high value, high, if there's any 
you know, supply lines or, you know, depends right. on the, on the, but, uh, you know, harass and harry uh, until forces arrive. Do what you can, basically. And the, at this point, you know, you're, you're viewing a siege, essentially. So, so now that we know he's alive, we're just here to assist. Yes. Okay. Um, Dan, you want to just dive in? What What do you want to do? Yes, I do. How How far are we <laughs> up? <laughs> I think that was going to be the answer. You are currently. It wasn't really a question. <laughs> It's more like, Stan, when do you want to dive in? You are currently a, about a mile high uh, and, and coming down towards the top of, top of the tree. Are there parachutes in this airship? Do you want I, a parachute? I, I do. I have a parachute for you. Because I don't think I have uh, any Featherfall stuff. Let me see. I don't think so. Yeah, I think that was uh, that was Gerana who has the. I just I fall like a rock most of the time. Right, I but but I I literally have a parachute for you. Oh sweet, thank you. <laughs> One stand size parachute. Right, <laughs> it just hadn't come up until now. <laughs> well, I appreciate your preparedness. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, crazy prepared. It's it's like vacuum pack rolled up. <laughs> it's like it's like a pack of biscuits. <laughs> hmm. You you pull that tab and it, <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> like he, all right, I'm uh. Click, 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 pulls it, and it, it's like, it's a pack of biscuits with, like, straps on it, you know, with, like, a belt, like a four-point harness biscuit tin, and he hands it to you, and So says, you activate it on the front? No, it can be on the back. Okay. Like, there's, there's, there's a string, there's a string, string is cheap. Got it. Uh... He hands it to you and says, don't apply any pressure to the tab till you want the parachute to come out. This thing is eager to escape. And he hands it to you like it might explode. <laughs> He'll take it very gingerly and, uh, and nod. I can help you put it on if that's easier. Yeah, probably. Imagine with the armor on. It's not yeah. super easy to do the... Yeah. the, the it's like, thanks. pull it out an arm and lean down. And then, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Bending over. Yeah. Much. He, like, walks around the back of you, does the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and then just buckle in the front and gingerly hands you the tab. And, like, remember, not till you're ready. No, okay. I'm ready. Are you are you ready to fall? Yep. I command right. the ship to open yep. underneath. Okay. The 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 ship uh the way it's designed it can't do the floor, but it does it set, opens up a hatch and then just tilts. So it's like how you clean the trailer. You just deflate the tires on one side and open the door. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly what... Yeah. It, it literally go. It goes slowly. It's not, you know, it, but, but enough to, and, until it's it's shifted 90 degrees. Da, 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 da. I got a 14. And, that, that looked pretty graceful. I just did an athletic check for fun. Nice. Nice. So, you hit yeah, the door squarely. Catch anything. Go. Yeah. Shields. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna and and as I'm doing that, I'm gonna activate my animated shield. So it's gonna be like hovering around me. As I fall. All it's right. not gonna hold the shoot in, is it? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> 
experimental. Yeah, can't shield slow down at the same with the same momentum. Hmm. <laughs> so you guys are now free fall. And uh, oh, he is. oh, Stan is. What are you doing, Click Clack? I'm guessing Stan wanted to be dropped in like the thick of things, right? You want to be dropping to the crowd? Yeah. Well, currently the ship can't really give you a pinpoint drop. You're gonna have to correct for a lot of that midair. But like, but like generally, it's we we aim stand more toward the crowd than toward the tree. Okay. Like yeah. the, the way I understood it, the the, the trees there, ones are. Zombies are trying to climb it, but there's a lot of defenses going on, so they're being picked out so it's a little thinner there, and then a thicker crowd around it. So you're deploying yeah. Stan to the ground? To, yes. Okay. To, so handle Stan. The, to handle the Black Friday crowd underneath. <laughs> Stan, you are in free fall. It's not the first time. It's not so uncomfortable. <laughs> Give me an athletics check. Nineteen. So you, you you once again kind of like use your shield as as uh, as a little bit of a rudder, uh, and you can you can pinpoint pretty well where you want to head. It's a long fall. Is there are are there any monsters that I can hit up the way? Are are you gonna try to get like? that close to the tree. Oh, I didn't I knew there were flying monsters too. I didn't know if they were out where I was. They're being handled by the wind. Okay. Uh, the, no, but I, I am gonna I let's see, I just bought some stuff. I'm gonna um I don't know if I need my potion of growth. I mean just Oh, why not? I just bought them, so I'm gonna. I'll, I'll take my. I'll, I'll. I'll fish out my potion of growth from my bag of holding. Need. The parachute was designed to support your weight. Well, <laughs> would Stan know this? I mean, this is a legitimate it's question. Crack of mine. Would Stan have thought of this? Give me an yeah. intelligence check. Oh, good. The rolls that I wait for, intelligence checks, which have no bonus. Six. <laughs> no. Um, I'm, I'm afraid weight dynamics and surface area and air... Nope. Not really your bag. Do, do I roll engineering to see how durable my shoot is? We, we might get to that. <laughs> okay. So meanwhile, up in the airship, you see with, with that natural 20 perception... As Stan goes rocketing down uh, past the top of the tree, the, the druid takes note. <laughs> Follows the trajectory upward like it's raining fucking tin cans. Uh, and, and, open. And, and spots you. Yeah. It, 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 it's a, a hand motion, and that side of the tree is no longer firing air firing the beams in your in the area the the ship has gone stationary to right stand out um within the eye is there wind happening no no perfectly calm okay okay sorry continue so it, uh and, and he, he beckons you very gently fly toward the thing. Tw okay. Toward the the ship uh, you way. One more time. Can the ship extend a gangplank for me to walk out on? No. Okay. Uh, 
the druid, however, as as the sh ship approaches and, and you come closer, uh, you see he he reaches out a hand and and sort of like in a, in a general grasping and a one of the medium sized branches along the crown of the tree just comes up toward you and the uh, the needles go from that sharpened emerald uh, to the back to soft duck and, and sort of net the airship and bring it in. Okay. Um, yeah, let me know when I'm in speaking range. You are. Uh, it, uh, it comes in with the, you know, it's it's not long at all. It stands only about a quarter of the way down the tree by the time you're it's amazing, Stan. It's full speed all the way down. Woo! And I'm not planning to take any potions until I've pulled the cord. Okay. I think it would be really hard to do that otherwise. I think right now you're just, like, very carefully holding on to the pin. It's just, ah! <laughs> right? You've... There, you get you have a very clear clear crystalline memory for one moment of Sangrid's voice saying, "Wait for it." <laughs> right. The the druid shakes off his hood, and you see a metal face with sort of a leather and wooden mandible jaw area. Uh, clearly crafted it's a uh, it's got pits and scars in some spots and uh uh the immense bulky figure as you reach it you see he is sort of impossibly balanced on the very topmost branch just right. two feet together waving his arms balanced easily he, he, he turns his attention to you sort of like half still directing the defenses, keeping everything still going. Are you from the south? Yes. Good. Yes. The, the council the is incoming. Yes. We're, we're, we're the first party. We're here to help. More will be coming. We're the advancing group. So you brought the holy man? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> there is a necromancer near. I do not know where. It is outside Stormfront. Stays out of my range. Any idea, general area? A general, like, quadrant? Forces came from north. Due north. All right. I held the night, but I have not rested. I kept my own magic. I have cast very little. Tree is majestic and powerful. Yeah, those of work. You want me to go after the necromancer? First, there is last ranger on ground. If there is hope, we must take it. I am locked here. I right. can go nowhere. Do you know where the ranger is? Kind of closes his eyes and, and shifts his balance a little bit and then points straight down to the base of the tree. Uh, about 30 degrees along the circle, the circumference of the trunk from where Stan is currently hurtling downward. Rough, rough measurement of how far that is between him and Stan. Ballpark distance. I know it's a giant tree. 
Better calculus now, damn it. <laughs> or um, up, man, I don't know. If a crab's falling at 65 miles an hour and a human paladin. Two trains leave the top of a tree at. Uh, it depends a lot on where Stan lands, is kind of the short version. He's about a third of the way down the tree now. But, d okay. If Do he I lands where he's gonna, like, and makes no change, it'll probably be about 500 feet around the, uh, around the are, tree. Are they gonna know about each other? You've got comms. Are they gonna know about each other? No, are, are, like, is r the ranger gonna see Stan? Or register at his entrance? Okay. All right. Um, no, not in any way you 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 know of. And given that the the uh, the druid seems to think that uh, there may be hope, it might even just already be down. Fine. Okay. Um. Before I go, anything else? Three will not stand another night. Oh no. Last mm. night, forces grew. Beasts of the wild came out in force, sacrificed the mer all of their lives for this tree. It stands. Tonight, I will do same if I must. Okay. Um, I'll check back in later. Uh, so I'm on top of the tree basically now. Like, yeah, you're you're it, it, a, a, a nice soft branch has kind of nestled the the bubble in in towards the very top of the tree. It's kind of like curved itself inward. Right. Um. I instruct the airship to pull out, like, if this is the tree, I want to be, like, here, you okay. know, and mount up, on, mount, get on Lovelace, seatbelt included, and, um, what's the best way to do this? Uh... Yeah, we jump out. Okay. Um, and we're level. We were like level at the top, right? Yeah, we would have been. Um, I don't want to develop too much. We jump out, and I pull something. It's not a parachute. It's a hang glider. <laughs> Is it, is this attached to? Uh, it's attached to Lovelace. It's 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 attached to the backpack. That's why I'm seat built it in. <laughs> it's like it's I'm sitting in it like a like a ski lift. Indeed, um, and hang gliders 100% cannon for gnomes. That's uh, it's not so unusual. It's two sticks in a tarp. It's you know. Mine's fancier, but you know. Um, and the intention is to spiral downward around the tree and provide covering fire. Okay. What color is your hang glider? Uh, nothing is painted. It's all what it's made of. Click Clack has no concern for aesthetic. <laughs> if, if there's anything on it, it was like measurement notes and i i made this while i was at the druid shop so it's like bamboo stalks and leaves so it look it all looks very like hook Furniture. peter Pan kind of construction nice. so uh the it deploys <laughs> and and Lo Loveless uh, 
basically kind of, I assume there's some sort of steering mechanism for her to link her legs in. It's it's mounted to her, so basically, like it's it's part of her backpack saddle mm-hmm. configuration just for stability. So basically, her body is the ship. Okay. So, so all right, so it's gonna be basically her like shifting her legs one at a time from one side to another to to make okay. Yeah. Like so give, weight. Uh, give me a dexterity a check. Spiral. Sorry? Give me a dexterity check for Lovelace. Oh, boy. <laughs> dexterity? Oh, that's not bad. That's right, folks. It's flying giant crab time. That's where we're at. 16. Not bad. Uh, enough to clear out to clear the branches. Um, right. it, it's it's going to be a slow spiraling descent for for a while. Uh, meanwhile, so as as that deploys, Stan, you're about halfway down the tree. And can I get another athletics check? Yep. Do I see the, um, can I do a perception check maybe to see if I see the, the, the glory of the hang gliding crab? Yes. It's not subtle. <laughs> but there's a lot going on. Or I might not, you know, looking up. <laughs> see what I got for perception, too. Seven. Kind of, lo- kind of lost in the sun. We will eventually be on the same side because I'm just going around the tree. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I can't currently see the ship or click lock. Your athletics check, on the other hand, was on point. So 23 on athletics, you're you're able still to to very neatly. Uh, control your descent and uh, pinpoint where you want to land. I can pinpoint where I want to land? Yes. You said there was a... uh, Was there something bigger on the ground than the horde of zombies? Or was it a... Was there any... uh, I think you were you were describing the person on the top of the tree earlier, and at first I yes. thought you were talking about someone on the ground. Yes, it's still hard to distinguish individual figures on the ground. Okay, there, how far is from the the ground now? Halfway, you said. Yeah. Okay. You're about halfway down the tree. Uh, if you'd like to make a perception test as you're going down, you, if you'd like to try and spot targets or whatever uh you know what? i i actually want to do some spells um i'm a bad I, I don't know how long you're supposed to wait on a parachute to like how far above the ground you need to be yeah but i'm I feel like i'm getting close i don't want to i don't want to overweight here Yeah, I'll I'll pull the I'll pull the parachute. Okay. And then I'm gonna cast uh, protection from evil, specifically undead. All right. They have disadvantage on attack rolls against me. Okay. How long does that last? Ten minutes. Okay. How long does it take to cast? One action. Yes. Excellent. So, so beneath you, click clack, you see the parachute open. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> still a good two hundred feet above the ground, uh, just clearing the the lowest branches uh, of the of the tree.
E, you descend. Where do you guys try to land? Are we jumping ahead to landing? There's not going to be much danger from here to there. The the method that you guys have uh, have chosen. If there if if there's enemies within range, I want to start shooting while I'm still up in the air. There will be enemies in range of you. Okay. Uh, the, the definitely within arrow range, sharpshooter, sniper, all your ridiculous. Yeah. I don't. I don't get range penalties. Yeah, yeah. So, so definitely. Um, basically, they're not very far up into the branches. Uh, the tree has kept them out, but you can see that there are handholds carved in, and as you're going down the tree, you can see, you know, scorch marks and and ooze trails, and um, this tree's taking a beating. Um, does it seem to be handling the ones on the on the trunk rather well, or is that a struggle? It's doing it's doing all right, but it's expending needles to to get rid of. Uh, right. So I mean, that's going to be a finite resource. You realize, and it's it's doing it selectively. Usually the branch will just kind of shudder and shake, and, and, and you know, the zombies not renowned for their athleticism. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start picking them off of the trunk. Okay. Um, and, and most of these are one-shot kill. Like, you, your, you guys are bonuses or such. Just so you know, for a lot of this combat, this will be true. You would have to roll a one to miss, and you'd have to do minimum damage, not not to kill an individual zombie. At least at the low levels. Uh, <laughs> seventeen and a thirty. So <laughs> uh, that that nat twenty is going to get at least three of them in one shot, just like head, torso, uh, midsection, and just tears the last one in half. Like, along the side of the trunk, just picked off three of them. Uh, Stan, did you give me that perception check on the way down? Um, I gave you one. Oh, I okay. can do another. I was still looking for click lack. Oh, yeah. Unnatural 20. Nice. And you run. see, so it, it's clear as you're getting closer to the ground and now you're not moving so fast, the storm is just sweeping up zombies off the ground as they're, as they're just waving in. And, and most of them aren't making it through. Some of them are kind of ducking and bracing against the wind, but the whole troughs of them are getting scooped up into the storm. Um... From near the center of it, or, or from uh, the wall of it, sorry, um, you can see coming in, though, a, a massive zombie. Well, a massive creature. Uh, you can tell from here it's probably undead, but it doesn't shamble. It's, uh, it, and it seems to move with purpose. It is probably 40 feet tall. 40 feet tall. Massive yeah, undead actually, creature. With the, with the check at the 20 and where you are going slowly enough, you can see there's another one way off in the distance. One of them is kind of tangentially straight out from the, from the trunk from where you are. And one is across the trunk and then across the way. So as you guys that uh, as Stan is is seeing this come in through the storm, uh, and and Lovelace continues to hang glide down <laughs> in, the, in, in a in a spiral around the tree as a firing platform for the gnomish 
reign of arrow death. We will take a brief break. Before Thanks things get weird. <laughs> right, and then things are going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like what you see so far, hit the like button. If you want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button. And if you want it to get better, hop over to our Patreon and help us out. Meanwhile, we'll be right back.